so instead of teaching people and saying, you should do this, you should do that, I, if I challenged you to scream time elimination, that would be more effective than if I educated you on how to reduce or eliminate your screen time. If I said the winner is gonna get this trophy, all of you, most of you would be way more served in order to reduce your screen time by a challenge, not by education. Jim Rohn said we're affected by two things, what we know and how we feel about what we know. In every business, customers rely on information to make a purchase decision. Less important is the information they are provided. More important is how they feel about it. Now here is a way where you can empower your customers and prospects to feel so excited to be part of what it is that you do that they can't resist spending money with you and they'll get a better result. The title of Jason Fladlin's 10 minute talk is the most powerful online customer engagement model. Please help me welcome Mr. Jason Fladlin. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Woo, I'm gonna go fast, is that okay? Yes, that's your spot to say yes. I'm gonna go fast, is that okay? Yes. All right, excellent. That's engagement, by the way. That's what we're here to talk about today. Briefly, set up three ways that your business can make more money. And there's only three ways. I learned this from Jay Abraham. Does anybody know the answer to this? More sales. Okay, so more sales could be more customers, so new customers, more purchases, bigger purchases, right? Only three ways you can grow a business. You get new customers, you get them to spend more often, and you get them to spend more money. And if you can do that exponentially by doing all three of these, we call this the gold mine. Now, of these three ways, if there was only one way that you could focus on to grow a business and you had to ignore the other two, which way for most of you is going to make you the most money? Okay. This is the worst way. A new customer is the most expensive thing to get. They're the one you have to spend the longest with, and they're the ones that are often the most skeptical of any and all claims because they have no previous relationship with you. Here's the biggest challenge of the product that we sell. It's very rarely an advantage before somebody spends money with us. How can somebody know your product is good? Typically, they have to buy it first. So they take a leap of faith. It's all perceptive. And so this is the challenge with selling higher prices. Generally speaking, the path is these two, which you need existing customers for, and of these two, this is the big one, selling at the highest price as possible. Joe was a pioneer in this field. If there's anybody to study on high ticket selling or high price selling, it's Joe. He was the first one ever to sell a high price continuity program, and he sold it to billionaires who owned yachts. No, he sold it to? <laughs> Carpet cleaners, you know, the people you pay to do the work you don't want to do are willing to pay more for education than a majority of the population. Now, not all of them, okay? So here is the rules. 20% of a customer base will spend 80% of its money, okay? So four out of five customers, potentially, that could be yours, you should flat out ignore if you want to make the most amount of money. You follow me? Okay, now we are taught as children to treat each and everybody equally, and that works in a communistic society, maybe, right? But in a capitalistic society, I am telling you, four out of five customers, you want your competition to have them, because they're not worth the headache that they endure. You want profitable customers. Now here's the biggest challenge. How do we find the 20% that spend 80% of the dollars, right? How do we find the iPhone users and not the Samsung Galaxy users, right? <laughs> Listen, mathematically speaking, an iPhone user is 16% of the smartphone market, yet they spend 74% of its money. If I'm selling science smartphones, I want you iPhone status symbol wearing, I don't care if it's 10 times as expensive, I look cool when I pull it out type of customers, right? How do we find the high ticket customers? The ones that are willing to spend the most with the least amount of effort. Anybody know? Okay, here's the best way I know. We allow them to self-select. I say, hey, here's a very expensive thing. How many of you want it? Most of you say, not me. A few of you say, I'll take that. Half of you that buy high ticket stuff do it simply because you can prove to other people that you can spend more money than they can. And that's one of the best benefits of selling at high prices. So why am I to deprive you of that experience? So we give it to everybody, and we allow those to raise their hand and step forward and say, yes, I would like this. And those who don't, we say, oh, you're one of those people. OK, whatever, right? I don't try to figure out who. I just put it in front of everybody and allow them to tell me who is the 20% of the market that makes 80% of the purchase. Does that make sense? OK. Now, it's easy to miss them if they don't consume your stuff. How many books do you buy per year, Jim? How many books do you buy? A lot. 
30. 30. How many of those do you actually read? Okay, so you're better than most, right? That's not true. That is true. <laughs> that is more than true. That is beyond true, right? Okay, he buys 30 books, and each year he learns, unlearns a book that he read the previous year, right? So you're at negative one. Okay, I buy probably 60 to 70 books a year. I read maybe 20 of them. I pay Joe 100,000 a year, and I maybe attend one of his 100,000 a year meetings recently as my track record. I'm good at paying, I'm not necessarily good at consuming, and all of you are simply the same. So we need consumption, because if a valuable product is only obvious after somebody buys it, it's still only obvious if they buy it and they consume it. Does that make sense? Okay, so how do we get users to consume it? That's the trick, that's the challenge. So this is what we've shifted to lately, and this, I would love for you to adopt something similar. What's the greatest way to get somebody to do something? What are some of the factors that will get somebody to compel themselves to do things that they otherwise wouldn't normally do? Take it away. Okay. Take it away. That's a good one. That's, my, that's one of my favorite ones, right? Okay. Joe says, hey, Jason, how much does it cost to hire you? I say, oh, you can't, right? immediately makes me more desirable to want to be hired. So is that calculated or did it just happen that way? You'll never know, right? <laughs> so, so you take it away, you say, I, I don't think you can do this new smoothie challenge. I, I don't know really if you're a P90X type of individual, right? Do you have what it takes? Now, usually marketing is more subtle than that, but that's the implication. What's another way you can motivate somebody? Think of some time in your life where you did something far beyond what you thought you were capable of doing. Michael. Okay, fear of losing it, okay, that's an interesting one, right? So we call that scarcity, one of my favorite things in the world. Fear of missing out. Pain of disconnect is another one, right? Now again, let's talk about, okay, think about uh, Taylor's story earlier. What motivated you to want to do something? Pain is the greatest motivator of all. So it's not even just necessarily pain of disconnect, it's pain of disconnect, all right? But think about a time when you made a massive upgrade in your health, in your wealth, or in another aspect. What really moved the needle for you when you said, this time it's gonna be different and I'm gonna see it through, and you kept going even when it got hard and you wanted to stop? Yeah, yeah. Okay? It's hard. See, this is what the thing about marketing. Everybody's a marketing expert because they see a lot of advertising. That's like everybody saying they're a hot heart doctor because everybody has a heart, right? All of you are missing the most important ingredient. The easiest way you can motivate anybody is to turn it into a competition. How many of you have looked back on something and you said, oh my God, I shouldn't even have done that? Why? Just because you wanted to win even the silliest, stupidest things, right? You went above and beyond, you worked harder, you stayed up late at night, you did all that extra stuff because you wanted the gold medal. Joe, what's that saying that uh, I think Napoleon Hill said it? Yeah, well, it, the real quote is uh, like, uh, well, one way to say it is my life changed the day I realized a man would die for a there blue ribbon. Right. It was like, they would die, for, but there's, the real thing was like a, a thread of ribbon is how Napoleon said it, that what a man, a man would give his life for a thread of ribbon. Yep. So you yeah. turn it into a competition. Now there are two types of competitions. There's internal competition, competition to better yourself. So a really smart marketer that I know had a contest model that he said, better your best. Really good, smart marketer. I wish he was here right now. Um, brilliant guy, right? His name is Joe Polish, by the way. Um, so you create an internal competition or an external competition. So what we do when we market to com customers now primarily to get new customers and to service existing customers and then to sell them higher ticket stuff, we challenge them. We don't say, I'm going to help you, blah, blah, blah. I challenge you to do blah, 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 right? So every year at the beginning of the year, there's like a healthy challenge or some sort of healthy habit challenge. We just did it in yoga. It's like, if you can go five days a week, then for six weeks, you get two entries into a contest for a month free yoga. Now I need a month free yoga like I need another hole in my head, right? It's like 70 bucks, 80 bucks, I don't care, but I won. <laughs> just to say, right? I did the most for males. Some woman beat me, I was pissed off, but I got the male number one. And I don't even know why, just because I wanted to win. 
I wanted to compete. So instead of teaching people and saying, you should do this, you should do that, I, if I challenged you to scream time elimination, that would be more effective than if I educated you on how to reduce or eliminate your screen time. If I said the winner is going to get probably. this trophy, all of you, most of you would be way this more probably. served in way order way. to reduce your screen time by a challenge, not by education. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video and I want to let you know that I have a new book that's come out and if you'd like to get it absolutely free, there's a link below in the description or you can wait till the end of this video or you can simply go to joesfreebook.com and you can get a copy there. You follow? So anything you sell, which is great, also sell a challenge with it. So sell the product and when most of your customers have trouble implementing it, which they will, then sell a challenge on the back of that, right? Very quickly, our challenges look like this. This is the tactics which matter the least, but it's the stuff all of you really want to know right now. We run six day challenges, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. We break everything down into four critical elements of what somebody needs to do to succeed. There are 20 to 30 minute long trainings. We do them live cast style. You can also record videos each day across the board, except for day five. This one is the 90 minute training and this is when we sell them the thing that we know now that they're challenged and excited and ready to go, we'll get them to the next level. So we can take somebody, because we typically sell these challenges for between five and $25 on the front end. And by the time they get to day five, they are so committed. There's a concept in marketing called identity, and it's the single greatest concept I've ever used to make my fortune. If I can create somebody as an identity who feels empowered and successful, guess what they do? They step into that identity and they become successful and they become empowered and then they invest in the higher ticket solutions which go anywhere from this to this. And we don't change any of the content. Content's the same. The framework is different. So I would suggest to you to take your best customers and instead of teaching them more or providing the normal solutions, physical, digital, or anything in between, create a challenge. Whatever you sell, you can create a challenge around. The challenge is built on the solution you want them to achieve that if you knew they achieved, not only would they be better customers, they'd be worth more money to you as well and they'd be more successful. That is a challenge model. We're partnering with companies in all sorts of fields to take their content, repurpose it into a challenge format, and customers that have been with them for years are like, God, finally, you're doing something that is totally worthwhile. Here's my money. And that's how we're crushing in the market right now. I can never do 10 minutes, man. This stuff's too hard. You've done a lot of them, though. <laughs> so, you, no. so um, all right. You're pretty much done. I don't know. Is there, is there any other thing you did not say that you'd like to share, like any famous last words? Well, so we're using these on Facebook really well because it's a social concept, too. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, what was, you know, Ben talks about how willpower doesn't work. It's really the environment. Yep. We're, we're discovering this as well. A lot of education is quietly in your own headphones on, looking at a computer screen. That's miserable, right? Mm -hmm. So we make it social by running it as a challenge where everybody's involved and everybody's cheering each other on. We also do homework lessons on the, on the end of each day. Yep. Michael. Thanks, Jason. Great, uh, great insight. Now, is this challenge for prospects or already? Both. Both. So I would urge anybody starting out to do it with existing clients and then forklift the model to new clients. And that's typically what we do. We start with our existing customer base and that way we can work out and fine tune anything that we screw up because we'll screw some stuff up. Uh, but then we get testimonials, results, and everything, and that benchmarks for us the amount of money we can then spend to acquire new customers to run them through this funnel. Uh, let's get a mic over here. <coughs> so let's take Genius Network, for example. How would you apply this concept for Joe and Genius Network? Yeah, great question. So me, as a mad scientist, to be more specific, because I'm a greedy capitalist, I say, what's our end result of what we want them to buy? I want them to buy Joe's $25,000 Genius Network. Or maybe, if that's too big of an ask, I want them to buy the $10,000 Genius Network event. So what type of challenge would we need to create so that by day five, they would be in the best state of mind if they were the person that was qualified and fit to go to the annual event to recognize that fact? 
And so we would do things. So like one of Joe's premises, for example, is your net worth is determined by your network. So one of our days of our challenges is figuring out who your network is right now and what it should be and how you're going to get there. Teach them that. So now they walk away like, oh my god, I'm not telling them network, net worth or related. They're telling me, oh my god, i got to find this network. And we're setting up the demand and the desire. Now we're showing them how to create their own. So anybody who knows that and follows that and sees the benefit is most likely to invest at the end. Now, 10% of our customers typically will take the upgrade. That varies based on price point a little bit, but in general it's 10%. The other 90% though, their open rates, their follow through, their follow ups, their commercial intent for anything else also goes up. Because they have such a transformative experience, they come out better. Like, we should really talk about get leverage and what that would look like as a challenge. Sure, I would be interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the fundamental question you ask. What are my customers paying me money for that they know that they should be doing, but for some fucking reason aren't doing? Like your accountants. They pay you a bunch of money, like $15,000 to come to your stuff, right? 18? 18 for the mastermind. Excellent. I'm glad you raised that price up to 18. Uh, and the majority of them, or at least a 30%, I would guess, walk away and still do the same stuff that they did before they came to your event. Now, that's not a failure on Michael. That's, that's important we understand that. Michael's responsible for Michael's actions. And Michael's actions are to empower them and give them the best resources to be successful. And then their responsibility is then to take that and implement it. But most of them don't, even if they pay a lot of money. And so that pisses Michael off, I'm assuming, because the more success stories he has, the easier it is for him to sell other accountants into his system. So he wants them to implement. And they want to implement, but they ain't implementing. And so in your particular case, I would run a challenge, and the challenge would get them each day to do a small thing, the equivalent of putting on your gym shoes and your track suit. And all of those small decisions that they make that are different and conscious will form an identity of somebody who's willing to do the things to be successful, and then you sell them the thing that's successful. So we've given up on going straight to high ticket. We put a challenge in front of it, we form a new identity with encouragement, excitement, and momentum, and then we slide in the offer, and we have to sell it less, and we get a higher take rate. Okay, I hope you found that video awesome and useful, so if you want to get a free copy of my book, I want you to click here. And if you want to watch some more videos that will be useful and awesome, click here. Go ahead. You're over here. Do it now. Come on. Thank you. Watch him. <laughs>